Do you ever worry that all this effort in the gym, all this grinding and sweating under the bar, might just be setting you up for a future of pain? You see older folks struggling with severely rounded shoulders, wincing just to grab something from a high shelf, and you swear that will never be you. But what if the classic chest exercises you're doing right now are the very things cementing that exact hunched over posture you fear? What if every rep is actively grinding down your shoulder joints, trading a little bit of pec growth today for a lifetime of rotator cuff agony tomorrow. You're putting in the work, but you're getting stubborn plateaus, and that nagging click in your shoulder instead of progress, and it feels like a betrayal. This isn't just about building a bigger chest, it's about building a body that lasts. Today, we are exposing the five staple chest exercises that are secretly destroying your shoulders, reinforcing bad posture, and are the biggest waste of your time, so you can finally train smart, stay pain-free, and build a full, strong chest that serves you for life. First, First, we have to talk about the most obvious killer, the guillotine press, or pressing the barbell straight down to your neck. Trainers used to praise this for the extreme stretch on the upper pecs, but what it really does is force your shoulder joint into an insane, unnatural angle. This is the single fastest way to cause shoulder impingement, grinding your rotator cuff tendons between the bones of your shoulder. You might feel a stretch, but what you're really feeling is your joint capsule screaming for help. There is no benefit here that you can't get safe from a properly executed inclined dumbbell press. Stop this one, immediately. But that one's almost too easy. The real trap is the one everyone thinks is non-negotiable, the super wide grip bench press. We see powerlifters do it to shorten the range of motion, and bodybuilders do it thinking, wider is better. The problem? For 99% of people, an excessively wide grip puts your shoulder in a weak, vulnerable position. It prevents your shoulder blades from retracting properly, and puts enormous shearing force on your AC joint and pec tendons. That tweak you feel at the bottom of the rep? That's your body warning you that a tear is coming. You will get far better chest activation and growth by bringing your grip into just outside shoulder width, where you can actually retract your scapula and press with power and safety. Next is the one that traps so many people because it feels safer, the Smith Machine Bench Press. The bar is on a track. What could go wrong? Well, that's the exact reason it's so dangerous. Your body is not a machine and your natural bench press path is not a straight vertical line, it's a slight arc. The Smith machine forces you into its fixed, unnatural path, which shoves your shoulder joint into whatever position it dictates, with no room for micro-adjustments. Over time, this repetitive, unnatural stress builds up and creates tendonitis and joint pain. You're also robbing yourself of the need to stabilize the weight, which is critical for building real-world, functional strength. You're building a chest that looks strong but is supported by weak, unstable shoulders, a perfect recipe for the frailty you're trying to avoid. The fourth is a classic ego lifter's mistake, the low and heavy dumbbell fly. People load up the dumbbells way too heavy, let their elbows drop way past their torso, and then just press them back up. This is not a fly, it's a terrible, shoulder-wrecking press. When you let your elbows drop that far below your body, you put an immense strain on your anterior deltoid and, even worse, your biceps tendon. You are risking a pec tear or a bicep tendon rupture for literally zero extra chest building stimulus. A fly is meant to stretch the pec fibers, not the joint. The solution is simple. Lighten the weight, stop the stretch when your upper arms are roughly parallel with the floor, and squeeze the chest to bring the weights up, keeping a slight, constant bend in your elbows. It's about the contraction, not the weight. Finally, we have the one that will make some people angry. Chest dips done with bad form. Dips can be a phenomenal chest builder, but the way most people perform them is a direct ticket to the surgeon's office. They let their shoulders roll forward at the bottom of the rep, caving their chest in. This internal rotation under a heavy load is the exact same posture we fear in old age, and you are actively training it. This forward roll shoves your upper arm bone forward in the socket, grinding away at the cartilage. If you feel pain at the front of your shoulder during dips, you are destroying your joints. To do them safely, you must keep your chest up and your shoulder blades pulled down and back, especially at the bottom. If you can't maintain that position, you have no business doing the exercise. So, stop training for your ego and start training for longevity. You don't have to choose between a big chest and healthy shoulders. The truth is, you can't have one without the other. But knowing what not to do is only half the battle. Now you need to know what to do instead. That's why I've put together a follow-up video on the five safest and most effective exercises to replace these, so you can build a massive chest without
about the paint, click the link on the screen or in the description to watch that right now.